But, uh, but, but uh, Mr. Dugan, so um, with Takes from the Massacre, how, how do you feel about the success of it and, and uh, people re-watching it every year and uh, still being a very well, I, I like it. Well, I, because, movie? you know, after 40 years, we started shooting 40 years ago next month. 40 years. Wow. And uh, so every few years there's a new generation of fans that come up that have discovered it again and uh, keeps me on the road, which is planned by me. You know, I've turned it, you know, I'm 60 years old now, I'm pretty much just a road gypsy. You know, it's not bad. Considering, you know, I can make more on a day signing autographs than I made making the whole fucking movie, you know, 40 years ago. So uh, it's kept me uh, afloat many times. You know. And, uh, Whenever I was a kid, the one movie I couldn't rent was Takes from the Massacre when I was a kid. My mom saw it with my dad at a drive-in, and she refused to let me watch it. Any other movie, and that was the one I couldn't watch. Well, yeah, I didn't let my daughter see it until she was 14. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, she always wanted to see it. Of course, I had a copy of it. I had to keep hidden away in case I was not home, and she decided to slap it in the VCR, you know. Uh, but it's probably a good thing that your parents didn't let you see it until you got a little older. I well, well, actually, yes. Uh, when I went to Blockbuster, I paid the guy a dollar to sneak it into another case and let me watch it, which, which changed my life forever. The, the Blockbuster guy was on the take. Yeah, there we go. I wonder how much money he made on the side doing that for kids. <laughs> you know, can you slide this porn in this uh, in the Bambi case for me? You know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice little side business he had going there. Yeah, well, a, lot of, a lot of, like, more movies like these days, they always have to try and add more. I don't always try to make it like the old 90 minute format in films. I just, I, as a matter of fact, uh, Bonnie, my ex, and I, <laughs> that's a long story. We're exes, but we're, never mind. <laughs> but, you know, we decided to go see a movie. I'll look it up on, uh, you know, my movie database. And it was over two hours long. Neither one of us want to see it. I don't want to sit in a movie theater for that long. And for one thing, you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom at some point. You know, it's always some crucial point in the film, and you're going to miss it. It just, I, li I really like the 90 minute format. Then I'm a huge fan of short format film. I love short films. Do you have any favorite horror movies in the recent years or anything? Recently? Yeah, recent or anything uh, uh, prior to Texas Massacre. Any, any, any film that influenced you or? Well, I was heavily influenced by all the old uh, Hammer films and oh, Vincent, Vincent, Pro really Vincent Price movies, you know, uh, 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 Corman films. Uh, it's one of the scariest movies I ever saw as a kid was called The Tingler. Have you ever seen The Tingler? Oh, is it the William Castle movie? Yes. And Castle, that's the name yeah. I was thinking of. And that movie scared the out of me. And I went with my sister and a bunch of her teeny bopper friends, and I was like about eight years old. And they practically had to carry me out of the goddamn theater. Yeah, well, you know, well, even now when I see a centipede or something, it's like, I think, the tingler, you know, oh, get it off of me. Yeah, yeah. Was it, wasn't the gimmick that you had to scream the loudest whenever it got up, you had to scream really loud? Yeah. And then, yeah. Some some theaters in the larger cities had low voltage uh, hooked up to the seats, so whenever the tingler appeared, you get a little, little subliminal subliminal jolt kind of, you know, not enough to even notice, but it was just when everybody when I, ever anybody asked me that, I, 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 the tingler, and then I was a big fan of, of uh, the the Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr. because he's such a sympathetic character. He didn't want to be the wolf man, you know. And then he's being chased through the through the cemetery in the, in the fog, and they got the townspeople got the torches. You know, the look on his face is like he's just trying to get away. He's not trying, going back at him to rip him apart. He's just trying to get the out of there, you know. And uh, so my early influence was probably those two films. Uh, the Haunting is another one. Oh yeah, that, that one still frightens me. And the scene where that door starts breathing. It's like, oh, ah, you know. <laughs> and then uh, later, uh, newer stuff. Now, this is not so new. It's almost 40 years old, probably, or 30 something years old. But the original Hellraiser, I think, was one of the scariest oh, yeah. movies I, I ever I actually watched that until about a year ago. That always frightened me as a kid, and then I finally got enough courage and watched it. Woo. I don't know what it is about it. The, the, the other dimension thing, the little box, you know, pinhead, you know, it's just sinking the hooks into somebody and ripping their skin completely off, you know, but wow. And I've met uh, Clive, I know Clive Barker, and you know, what an imagination that guy has. Christ. And, uh, you know, 
know, I rented that movie one time. My daughter was about 14. She was at a slumber party. And we, we lived in an old two-story farm bungalow seven miles from the nearest town out in the country. And she had to haul upstairs. And she was having some friends over, and I had to go into town. And get, I still remember what she, they sent me for. Cool Ranch Doritos. Mountain Dew. Some uh, tombstone pizzas, one with pepperoni, one with everything, and one just cheese. And Dad stopped by the movie store and picked us up some movies, something scary. I was like, scary, okay, what do you want to see? And one of them says, well, the new Freddy Krueger movie's out. And I was like, you know, being a jaded horror movie actor, I was like, shh, Freddy Krueger? That's not scary. And they're like, oh, yeah, Freddy's really scary. I said, okay, I'll, I'll get the new Freddy Krueger movie, but I'm going to get you something really scary. And they're like, oh, okay. So I got first television. Just four 14 year old girls. And, and you know, they put the first the Freddy Krueger movie on, and, and they had one of their pizzas, and probably some Orville Redenbacher microwave popcorn, and their, and their you know, pre teen beer, the Mountain Dew, you know. And uh, there'd be a scream and some laughter, you know, from upstairs. Then there was a pause. Now came downstairs, went to the bathroom, all this stuff. Then they go back upstairs, and within minutes, these horrifying screams are coming from upstairs. <laughs> you know, my wife looks at me and goes, John, do you think you better go up there? I said, yeah, maybe I'll better. <laughs> I went up there, and, I, ah! and they all jumped on me. And I said, that's okay, I'll turn it off. And they're like, no, 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 leave it on. But stay here with us. So I got to wash it with four teenage girls piled on top. I mean, they were literally on top of me with their heads buried in my chest. And they'd look up again. Ah! You know, but they wouldn't let me turn it off. 